Hi, and welcome to Prepping Essentials. So, I guess we've all seen a movie or two where the electricity grid goes down due to some catastrophe, such as a terrorist attack, a cyber attack, an EMP or solar flare. This immediately causes a total blackout and the collapse of essential services and, of course, a breakdown of law and order. Many people will assume that the thought of the entire grid going down is pretty far-fetched, right? Well, it seems that it's not so far-fetched after all, because that's just what happened here in the UK yesterday. The UK Energy Regulator has demanded an urgent report from the National Electricity Grid Operator after a major power cut caused apocalyptic rush hour scenes on roads and in airports and railway stations across the country yesterday. The loss of power covered almost the entire country from Cornwall in the south to Newcastle in the north. The electricity blackout started just before 5pm yesterday, which was Friday the 9th of August. Traffic lights on roads across large parts of the country went out, causing traffic gridlock. Railway stations across London and the south of England came to a standstill, as did many of the trains on the London Underground and on the main line railway system that use overhead electric cables to power the trains. The sudden loss of power also caused chaos for many airports, hospitals, businesses and homes. The blackout was apparently caused by the simultaneous failure of two electricity generating stations, which led to a massive undersupply to the national electricity grid. A gas-fired power station in Bedfordshire failed at 16.58, followed two minutes later by the Hornsey offshore wind farm. This sudden loss of power supply triggered an automatic safety system, which caused the grid to go into a controlled shutdown in order to prevent a catastrophic failure. It's not, not known exactly what caused the failure of these two generating stations. The good news is that by some technical wizardry, the national grid was able to get up and running again after only a few hours. However, having said that, the chaos caused to railways and airports has continued overnight and into this morning as the rail and airline operators try to play catch up with the stranded trains, planes and passengers. The bad news is that this event confirms the fragility of our mains utility system. It doesn't need to be a major terrorist attack or EMP event to cause the system to come crashing down, not just on a local scale, but in this case on a national scale. It also highlights our total dependence on electricity for our day-to-day -day basic needs. When the electricity stop, so do our essential services and so do our home comforts also stop. Given our dependence on electricity, it makes perfect sense to have some form of alternative power supply for when the mains grid goes down. So if you've not already done so, I would urge you to consider doing this. Generating your own electricity need not be difficult or expensive. Indeed, I've covered this subject in a number of previous videos. So if you haven't seen them, I'll leave links in the description box so that you can go and check them out. Petrol or diesel electric generators come in all shapes and sizes. They're simple to operate, affordable, and if necessary, highly portable. Their main upside is that even smaller size units can provide high amounts of power, whatever the weather. Their main downside is that they do need regular refueling, which means regular fuel bills, if indeed that fuel is available. Wind turbines and solar panels also come in all shapes and sizes, and they can provide a reliable and almost indefinite energy resource without any ongoing costs. Their main upside is that the fuel is free, as it comes from the wind or the sun. 
The main downside is that you'll need a way of storing the power they generate for times when the wind isn't blowing or the sun isn't shining. Also, depending on how much power you need to generate, they can be very expensive to set up. I use a mixture of options for both my home and also for when I'm away from home camping. I have a 200 watt petrol generator which provides enough power for lighting and household appliances such as grills, fridges, washing machines and even my microwave. It's very portable and it's very easy to operate. As an electricity backup for the house, I have solar panels on my shed roof. These provide electricity through a charge controller to a 12 volt battery bank. The system has a 12 volt outlet, USB sockets and an inverter to provide 220 volt mains power. The system generates electricity even on a cloudy day and takes very little maintenance. With the exception of my microwave, it can run all of my normal household appliances and do that for several hours a day. I also have a portable 100 watt solar system and a 12 volt battery pack which I use while I'm camping or on the move. Both of these can power small electrical appliances or they can be used to recharge things such as torches, phones and laptops. I guess the key message I want to get across is that you should seriously consider having an alternative supply of power in case the mains grid does go down and doing so need not be that expensive. Certainly for an investment of a couple of hundred pounds you could have a backup system capable of powering your essentials such as your fridge or to charge your torches and phones. So do take a look at my previous videos for some suggestions and to give you ideas as to what to look for when you do your own research online. Well, that's it for this video. I hope that you found something in there that was of use to you. If you did enjoy the video, then please do click on the like button and also feel free to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done that. As always, I welcome any comments, questions or suggestions that you might have. Just leave them in the comment section below. But for now, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.